Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a brand new tool to the Gina Kay Designs online store and a fun card that gives you the look of stained glass. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to make this card project. First, you're going to need some dies. And the dies that I'm using are the Cherry Lynn Designs dies. These are the Stackers Layers dies in the oval shape, and these are the regular Stackers dies. And then we have one of the Scalloped Ovals dies, and this is the largest scalloped oval. And I'll show I'll get to that in a little bit. The new tool I'm going to show you today are the brand new stitching tool by Cherry Lynn Designs. Now they come in ovals, they come in circles, and they come in a couple other shapes which in time we're going to get in our online store. But I wanted to grab the ovals and the circles because we carry the regular dies that coordinate with these sets in our store now and a lot of you already have those. And so some of you may be getting interested in the stitched look that you can get from stitched dies, but you're thinking, do I really need another set of ovals dies? Do I really need another set of circles dies? This is a tool that will turn those circles and ovals that you already have from Cherry Lynn Designs into stitch dies. So this is really fun. You can see what they look like. They don't have any blades. They just have the stitch marks. Okay. The rest of the things you're going to need for this card is some Versamark ink and embossing powder, and I'm using the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Black Powder. You're going to need an embossing magic pad or any kind of anti-static pad, some scissors, and then I'm using the Zig Clean Color Markers, and the ones that I'm using are orange, bright yellow, and red. And you know I'm really into these markers right now, but you can use any markers for this technique. You can use Copic, you can use Spectrum Noir, Spectrum Aqua, Distress Markers, whatever you want. Then you're going to need some black ink, and I'm going to use the VersaFine ink for this. This is one of the new black inks that we're carrying in our store. It's an excellent black ink, and I also love the Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink, but I like to mix it up for you guys because some of you have this one. Then you're going to need some stamps, and the stamps that I'm using are the butterfly stamp, and then the half butterfly stamp, it's the side view of the butterfly, and then I'm also going to use the greeting that says, thank you so much. And these come from the Made with Love Stamp TV kit. Alright, then for cardstock, I have some extra cardstock here because I'm going to show you the dies. I have some sweet mango, some black onyx, and a white heavy base weight card base. I also have some of the small white foam squares. And then I have a little paintbrush that I use to remove embossing powder if it gets stuck anywhere I don't want it. I also have my score buddy, and then I have a little bit of washi tape. And the washi tape I'm going to use not as part of the card design, but I'm going to use it to secure my dies down. So I'm going to just cut a couple pieces of those and have them ready to go. And washi tape is great for this because it's a real low-tack tape, and you can use it over and over again, and it won't pull up your paper when you pull that off of your die, when you set your die. Okay, so let's start by investigating this tool a little bit. And I'm going to do it with the ovals because that's what I'm using for my card today. So when you get these, these are going to be packaged on a little magnet, which is really a neat way to store them. Even if you store them in some of the newer storage methods where you um, put them into an envelope, it's kind of nice to have them on a magnet because they won't fall off and they'll all stay together nicely. All right. And I'm going to use my cuddle bug for this. You can use any die cutting machine um, if you have the Cherry Lynn crossover, or if maybe you're lucky enough to have gotten the new Cherry Lynn Designs die cutting machine. This is the, the little sister is the one that I'm looking at. They also have, I think, the big sister. Let me grab a piece of white cardstock here. Now I want to show you what these dies actually look like. I'm going to use the ovals. Let me grab this oval here. Now the first thing I want to show you is a way that you can just create a stitched outline. 
So let's say you wanted to do a, a, a white paneled card. You were going to put your greeting down here and you wanted to stamp something here and you just wanted to have a kind of a little border around it, but you didn't want to cut anything out. So I have the C plate, I have the paper and the stitcher's die, and I'm just going to run that through. So what that does is it leaves you with a nice little stitched line going around the panel. Now maybe you wanted to have a stitched panel, but you wanted to have a cutout on the other side of that, the inside of that. So then you just need to find a die that will work. That one's going to be a little bit too small, so let's go up to this size. Okay. So you're going to lay that right inside the stitched area. Okay. And then you're going to put your plate on top and then you're going to cut. So now this would make a nice decorative edge. You can see that the stitched area. So this would make a nice decorative edge if you wanted to do a shaker card and put a piece of acetate in there and then have things shaking. You still have that cute little stitched edge around the outside. Okay, so that's two things that you can do just by using the stitched edge by itself. You can also double up on them if you wanted to have another stitched edge around the outside of that. You could do that. You just have to kind of line it up. and add a second stitched edge. Give it a little bit more of a decorative property. Double stitched. Okay. So now let's get to the card at hand and the way we're going to use the stitch die for this. Let me put these aside. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to cut out one of these larger ovals. Now these are the regular nesting ovals. On our website they look like the rainbow colored ovals. So I'm going to cut that out. And then I want to add a decorative stitched edge to that. So I'm going to grab that silver stacker, the silver um, stitching tool. I'm going to lay that down. And you can put a little washi tape on that if you want to hold it in place, but it seems to be, seems to be working out okay for me this morning. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm going to lay that down on top, and I'm going to put in my stitches. So now I have a stitched oval. Okay. I'm going to put that aside for a second, and I want to grab a black piece of cardstock. And I want to go one size up from this oval, which would be the next one up is the silver stackers layers die. And I'm going to cut this one out in black. All right. So this is going to layer onto that piece. But I want to add a little stitched edge around the black. So I am going to go up one size in the stitching tool. And this is going to go exactly around the edge. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So this is why I want to use my washi tape. You see I've got it all lined up here. But I want to tape that down so it doesn't move. Like that. I'm going to tape that down. And then I'm going to add that stitching around the outside, and that's going to get real close to the edge. And that's another look that you can get. If you use the silver ovals with the um, 
with the stitching tool, it's going to go right up close to the edge. If you use the stitching tool with the purple ovals, you'll get a little bit more space. So you can see there, I don't know if that's easy to see or not, but you'll be able to see it in the photograph um, that the stitching is right along the edge. And it doesn't get in the way when you put the the white oval on there, you still see the stitching around the outside. And I'll get a close-up shot and you'll be able to see the picture of that on the website when you're watching the video at Stamp TV. Okay, and then I'm going to cut out one more and that's going to be the purple scalloped oval. And the scallops only come in purple, so you won't have a problem remembering which one that is. And I'm going to cut that out and that's going to go around the outside of this whole sandwich of ovals. This one had a little blue on it. All right. So then that's going to go right along the outside of that. So that stitching adds so much. And you can do all these same things with the circles since they come in both the circles and the ovals. Now, a lot of you are going to ask me, so I'm going to just address this right now. Hopefully this will help. Um, some of you are going to ask me, do these, um, do the oval stitchers work with other oval, oval dies from other companies? And my, my short answer is, I don't know. It depends on the shape of the oval. I do remember that Spellbinders had something called their petite ovals, and they were shaped a little bit more like these, um, but I don't know if they'll work. That's something that you would have to try. Will the circles work? Probably, because a circle is a circle. You just have to find the right size. But ovals are shaped differently. Some are fatter, some are thinner. So I, I, I would say that if you wanted to take a chance and try it, um, you may have ovals in your collection that work. But if you don't, you know, if it doesn't work out, they're not coordinated to work with anything but the Cherry Lynn ones. Okay, so now my next step for this card is going to be to add a little bit of texture into this orange, this sweet mango piece of cardstock. So what I have here is my score buddy, and this is a perfect square. This is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And so this is going to create perfect little square diamonds. And I'm going to start at three inches and go to three and a quarter, three and a half, three and three quarters, four, and I'm going to just keep going on those quarter inch marks. And then I'm going to flip it around, start at three inches again, and you'll notice on mine, my top corner is at three inches. My bottom, I marked that with a little sharpie right there. I put a little black dot so I would know which line matches the top. It just makes it a little easier to line it up. And I'm going to keep going with that. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it the other way so I can do the, the crossway lines. And again, just sticking with those quarter inch lines all the way down. You really kind of have to hold on to this so that it doesn't shift. Make sure you have your thumb at the bottom point and a finger near the top to keep it from shifting. But this makes a really nice embossed background and it's a good tool to take with you because it definitely works great for the Gina K Designs heavy base weight cardstock for creating a fold, but it also will substitute as an embossing folder if you don't have one with you. So there's a nice little texture for the background of this. Okay, so now let's emboss the butterfly. So I'm going to grab the embossing magic pad and just rub that over the surface and then with some Versamark, I'm going to ink up this butterfly. I love this butterfly. This butterfly really creates the look of like stained glass, the way you can color it. I'll stamp that right in the middle here. Okay. And then we're going to add a little bit of the black fine detail embossing powder. I'm just going to do that over this little piece of cardstock. And 
and then just blow away the excess and I'm going to emboss that. This really kind of looks like wrought iron when it's done. It's such a cool butterfly. I love it so much. I can't believe I've made 10 cards already in 10 cards with the Stamp TV kit and I haven't this is the first time I've used the butterfly so it's kind of fun. There's so many great images in this kit. And we still have a few left before our new kit is going to debut. Our new kit's coming out in April. All right, so now I'm going to mount this onto that black oval that has the stitches in it. I'm using a little bit of extra tape since the oval is a little bit warped from embossing. I love those double stitches. That's so cute. And then this whole panel is going to go onto the scalloped oval. Okay. Make sure that's lined up well. All right. So now the next step is I want to do a little bit of coloring using these zig markers. So I'm going to start with the red. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is because I know a lot of you have purchased these zig clean color uh, real brush pens for water coloring. But I also want to show you that they can be used just as a regular water based marker and create beautiful, bright, vibrant color that isn't streaky or blotchy at all. See how nice that is? And they're very, very fun to color with. That point is so fine that you can really get into tight areas. So starting with the red one, I'm just going to pick different areas to color. And I'm going to match it on the other side too. And it is like working with a paintbrush. It's really, really fun and really relaxing. But you can see you get really vibrant, bold color with it. And as far as these clear, these uh, clean color brush pens go, I would say that if you can get a set, that's great. But if you can't and you want to try them, I would pick a few of your favorite bold colors, maybe two greens, a lighter one and a darker one, a red, a bright pink, maybe a turquoise, just a collection of a few of your favorite bold colors and try those first. And then if you like them, you can always fill in with the rest of the colors and I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. I went for the set. I found a set on Amazon at a really, a really good price. And I have that on the website at Stamp TV if you're interested. It's on the sidebar. And I did get a set, and I really like them. But I don't know if I really needed all of them or not. I'm working my way through them, though, that's for sure. But if you're just starting and you just want to try a couple, that's a great way to go. Now, if you don't have these clean color markers, you certainly can use Distress Markers. You can use Spectrum Aqua. You can use any of the water-based markers that are out there for this. I really do like using water-based markers for this technique because um, it wipes right off of the embossing areas. And some alcohol markers react a little bit when it comes to embossing powder. So I'm not sure exactly which ones. I, I haven't had much trouble with the Spectrum Noir ones. And I haven't really tried it with the Copic ones too much. So um, you just have to be careful not to color right over that embossing, those embossing areas with alcohol markers. All right, and the last color is going to be this yellow. This is the bright yellow. And it certainly is. Just fill in all the remaining areas. And I'm going to leave the tiny dots white because I think that they really stand out against that black embossing powder. 
Now, for those of you that are watercolor experts, you could color these in and blend them and create shading and stuff. And you can do that also with alcohol markers. But that is one bright stained glass looking butterfly, isn't it? Love it. Okay, so then my next step is going to be to adhere these two panels together. And this is a really simple layout, but it's quite striking. And then that is going to go right up here on my card there. But before I do that, I'm going to add my greeting. Just in case I get any black ink anywhere else on the block, I don't want it to by accident get on this area. So I'm going to use my VersaFine ink pad and just ink that stamp up. And then that's going to go way down here at the bottom. There we go. You can see how nice and bold the stamp is. They stamp so nicely. And then we're going to add this panel up top. And then about here. I'll move that just a little bit. Move that over just a hair. Yep, I did smear my greeting a little bit, but that's okay. And then this is going to just get adhered to this part out here. And yes, I wanted that to extend out a little bit. And let me show you my finished card because I did it a little bit different here by making one more butterfly. I did the side view butterfly and I just fussy cut it, fussy cut that one using a pair of scissors. It's pretty easy to cut out. They're pretty smooth lines. And I popped that one up using some of the small foam squares. So that is my finished card project. And you can see all of that detailed stitching in both of those ovals, a little bit of a textured background there using the score buddy, and a little bit of a stained glass look using the Zig clear color markers and some embossing powder. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more card projects featuring the Made with Love Stamp TV kit, and I hope to see you soon.